Good morning and welcome to Morning Psalms and Prayer. Today is Thursday, November 5th. We begin with, once again, a prayer from Lifting Up Our Hearts, Prayers of John Calvin. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that as you have so kindly showed yourself to be our shepherd and even our father, and have carefully provided for our safety, grant that we may not by our ingratitude deprive ourselves of your favors so as to provoke your extreme vengeance, but on the contrary, suffer ourselves to be gently ruled by you and render you due obedience. And as your only begotten Son has been by you set over us as our only true shepherd, may we hear his voice and willingly obey him, so that we may be able to triumph with your prophet, that your staff is sufficient for us, so as to enable us to walk without fear through the valley of the shadow of death, until we shall at length reach that blessed and eternal rest, which has been obtained for us by the blood of your only Son. Amen. Okay, we are in Psalm 102. This one is a little bit longer, has a little bit different tone, but we are going to do the entirety of it. We're going to read the whole thing today. So, hear the word of the Lord. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let, me cr let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. For my days pass away like smoke, and my bones burn like a furnace. My heart is struck down like grass and has withered. I forget to eat my bread because of my loud groaning. My bones cling to my flesh. I am like a desert owl of the wilderness, like an owl of the waste places. I lie awake. I am like a lonely sparrow on the housetop. All the day my enemies taunt me. Those who deride me use my name for a curse. For I eat ashes like bread and mingle tears with my drink because of your indignation and anger. For you have taken me up and thrown me down. My days are like an evening's shadow. I wither away like grass. But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generations. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. For your servants hold her stones dear and have pity on her dust. Nations will fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth will fear your glory. For the Lord builds up Zion. He appears in his glory. He regards the prayer of the destitute and does not despise their prayer. Let this be recorded for a generation to come, so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. That he looked down from his holy height from heaven to the Lord, looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise, when peoples gather together in kingdoms to worship the Lord. He has broken my strength in mid-course. He has shortened my days. O oh my God, I say, take me not away in the midst of my days, you whose years endure throughout all generations. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment, you will change them like a robe and they will pass away. But you are the same and your years have no end. The children of your servants shall dwell secure. Their offspring shall be established before you. As I said, this has quite a different tone than some of the Psalms we've been in recently. I want to specifically look at verses 18 through 20 as we start out and then some at the end. Let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. Now, the idea here is that the psalmist is desiring that this story of who God is, that how he, of how he saves his people, would be recorded so that, well, a people who have not yet been created may praise the Lord. Now that sounds like good news for us. We are that people. We are that people of God who had not yet been created. And what did God do through the people who wrote Holy Scripture? He recorded it for a generation to come, a generation for us, that when times are hard, that when we know that we need to hear about salvation, we can hear the story of God and how he saves us. And most importantly, as it says here, we can see that he looked down from his holy height, from heaven, the Lord looked at the earth, and what did he do? He heard the groans of the prisoners to set free those who were doomed to die. In our sin and in our unbelief, we were doomed to die. We were people who were unable to rescue ourselves. And so what did it take? It took God looking down from his holy height, height and seeing that we needed to be saved. But not only did he do that, he came down in the second person of the Trinity. God the Son took on our flesh and was among us. And he not only heard the groans of the prisoners, but he 
had things happen to him that caused him to groan and he was doomed to die that we might be saved. And so that's an important thing for us to remember that this was the prayer of the psalmist, that this would be recorded for generations to come so that you and I could hear it. And as we go down to the last few verses here, we see that this is all because God sees the whole of history. Verse 25, of old you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. So everything that we look at, everything that we see, as important as it seems to be to us, right? It's going to perish, but God will not. And I find it interesting that the psalmist says, wear out like a garment. Now, obviously their garments were different than ours are today. But to wear out like a garment, uh, we all have clothes that wear out. Uh, we feel like the earth is eternal because our clothes wear out and we throw them away, but the earth remains. But compared to God, compared to his eternal nature, this earth of things that we hold so tightly to is, is like worn out clothes for us. But what do we see here? That God, he says that he will change them like a robe and they will pass away. Things change, but what happens? God is the same. His years have no end. And this is such a blessing for us. The children of your servant shall dwell secure. Their offspring shall be established before you. Once again, we see that promise. That if we are faithful to proclaim the good news to our children, and we are faithful to share that gospel, there is a promise. There's no guarantee here, but the idea is that when we trust God and we continue to raise them in the faith that we share the gospel with them. We have a trust, a covenant promise that he will be a God to us and to our children. And so may we cling to that, that all the things of this earth might pass away, but God remains. No matter how things look in our world, no matter how permanent we think it is, it's temporary. And so we need to trust that God will be faithful to his promise to his covenant people. May we trust that we have been established before him and those who come after us, who hear the gospel from us will be the same. Let us go to prayer. Father in heaven, hear our prayer, O Lord. Let our cries come to you. Do not hide your face from us in the day of our distress. Incline your ears to us and answer us speedily in the day when we call. For we know that our days pass away like smoke and our bones burn like a furnace. Our hearts are struck down like grass and we wither. May we remember today that you are in control and you are eternal and from everlasting to everlasting. Today we pray for the witness of your church. You have called out a people for yourself, a people not defined by ethnicity or any human markers that we seem to value, but by your grace you've called us and made us your people because we are in Christ. And we praise you that there are those from every tribe, tongue, nation in your family. We pray that by your word and spirit, you would embolden your church to faithfully proclaim the gospel of Christ and him crucified, that more may hear and believe the good news, strengthen your people to stand on the word of God as our standard of faith and practice so that we might be better witnesses to a lost and dying world. And as we step into your world today, may we remember your sovereign hand upon us and we pray with the psalmist. Let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. We know that you have made us a people in Jesus Christ, and we pray for those who come after us and ask that through your word and spirit, you would empower us to live in such a way that those who come after us would find us to be faithful to you. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Have a great Thursday. Take care.